But if you want to stick around for q and I'll answer all your burning questions to the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. So let's jump into the Q&A. Comments. <laughs> I'm shocked that you're shocked. I was this close to doing one of those uh, open face uh, thumbnails today. But I had other stuff to do, so I said, that's stupid. I'm not going to do it. But I was when I read that, when it said, like, we don't know if uh, this crypto is ours or if it belongs to the other people. I was like, are you kidding me? Anyhow, Jack in the Crack. You're my best channel. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hua. Must be Army. Thanks, Jack. Albert Dujardin, I need my cryptos back. I do not blame you. Thank you, Christopher. I appreciate it. And Beardy. I'm cold. What should I do? If you're cold, that's crazy because everywhere else it's like super hot. I think it's 40 degrees Celsius in London today. It was like 104. Right now in El Paso, it is. That's why sometimes I look kind of shiny because uh, I'm sweating. 97 degrees. So in here, it's probably about 100. And that's how it goes. That's a great question. Wade says, what happened to all the loans that got liquidated during the freeze? Probably on uh, Celsius's balance sheet. And uh, we just saw exactly where they went. Great question, Wade. I got to tell you. Oh, that's right. Summers and winters are flip-flops. It's zero Celsius in Australia. That's got to suck. Yeah. And here's a great one. Brandon... McNamara says it perfectly. My world is upside down. When everyone is bullish, I've learned to be bearish. When everyone is bearish, I've learned to be bullish. And that's a pretty good investment strategy from Warren Buffett. It works out, works out a lot of times. Not all the time. <laughs> perfect weather in San Diego. Yeah, also perfect weather in Puerto Rico. Cannot wait to go back. Um, Yeah, Steve Hankey says we've reached peak inflation. You know what? It's a great question. You know what we should look at? Yep, that's not it. A bend website on accident. Let's see where we're at as far as inflation. Not bad. So again, Trueflation, links in the description. It's a free website you can use. And they just pull in 30 like data sources, 30 different points, and they use Chainlink for, uh, as an oracle to pull in all these different data points. And you can see that, I mean, they they called it right. It's not eight and a half percent like like the government said. They said, that's nah, about 12% or 11 and a half. And now we can see it actually going down, 10.8, 10.14, not too bad. So yeah, maybe it is. And that's why, maybe that's why people are so, not exuberant, but they they feel a lot braver uh, with what's going on with the market. Because if, if the inflation's going down, the question is, here's the big question. Will the Fed and Jerome Powell look at the CPI numbers and say, okay, these are the numbers we're going to base on are, uh, to increase the rates, or are we going to base it on what we see happening right here and now? And um, if they do it from retroactively, which is the CPI numbers, then it'll be a high a high one. But if not, they say, well, we think we're doing the right things. We see in different sectors that it actually is going down. It'll be okay. The real question is on July 27th, what will the market do? If the market doesn't blink at uh, one full uh, basis, or as some people, I always correct me, 100 basis points or points or 75 basis points or one full point, 1% increase, and it doesn't move, then uh, I think we'll do good. Yeah. Steve Hank, you predict 9%. I did not know that. 100 bips, yeah. Why is crypto going up? I got to tell you, well, TA will tell you that they knew that the whole time, that they knew it was going to go up at some point. Uh, I mean, they're not wrong. It does go up. I could have told you that without looking at a chart. I just don't know when exactly. So why is it going up? Maybe they take a look at because we're so attached to the hip with S&P 500 and NASDAQ. Maybe they take a look at it and go, well, you know, the inflation points that we see around are looking pretty good. We see that the oil price is dropping. We see that, uh, that the 
unemployment numbers are still staying around the same, about 3.6%. We see that the supply chains maybe are a little bit of, a, of an improvement potentially. So they look at that and go, well, maybe that's pretty much positive. And then, of course, the earnings report came out. And uh, banks look to be, in some parts of it, not doing so great. In other parts, as far as like lending, doing fantastic. So maybe look at all around that and say, I think I'm going to invest into crypto and go from there. Or maybe it's just that all the people that were tourists got the hell out. And now all the people like me and you are hanging around and going, well, in three and five and 10 years, this is, looks to be pretty good. So the question that I always ask is, is Bitcoin cheap or is it expensive right now? If you look at the uh, market value to realize value, pretty darn cheap. So can it go, can it go lower? Yeah. Can it go higher? Sure. <laughs> but right now it's looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Sam, I ate it. wasn't your stake pool. Again, if you're looking for a place to park your Cardano, uh, the new stake pool. And uh, if you go to, there's a link in the description. It says the new stake pool. So they're right at the top. There's a video, it's about 20 minutes, that explains the proof of work versus proof of stake, how everything works as far as transferring it over, taking your ADA off the exchange, putting it into your Daedalus, your Roy, or ADA Lite wallet, and uh, how to stake it. And you don't have to use mine, but I show you exactly how to find stake pools that you could stake to. And of course, that website, danteachescrypto.com, is 100% free. That's it. Yeah, Soren says we oversold. But here's the thing. We were oversold for a long time. And you can take a look at, I mean, the RSIs, uh, well, people look at the RSI and go, well, we were totally oversold. Yes, I get that. But if we look at the MVRV score, I mean, we were below one since June 13th. And actually, we talked about this yesterday um, when Grayscale put it out and said that was the official start of a bear market, I suppose. But that's when everything is cheap. Could it go longer? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also crazy thing that saving five basis points is the bull case right now. True. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Arnold uh, says this, the Celsius claim form only asks for USD, which is the dollar amount. How do we account for the amount of crypto we are owed, not the USD amount? Which is why that form made no sense to me because it was asking, I was asking some strange questions that, oh, it's already done. And we just went over. So to me, Again, I don't, I think the legal terms and in the courts, I'm not for sure because I'm not a lawyer, but it looks like they're asking for dollar amounts to pay back people in dollar amounts. And to me, that makes no sense unless, unless this would actually, this would make sense to help out Celsius, the company. What they would do is say, okay, well, on uh, June, June 13th, Bitcoin was worth 30 grand. Okay. So you had one Bitcoin in there. So you say, okay, I lost $30,000. Now they do the Bitcoin mining and they wait and they wait and they wait and then everything gets reorganized. And then hopefully at that point that uh, Bitcoin maybe goes up above 30,000, maybe to 40,000. They go, okay, great. You said it was 30,000. That's what the form and the claim was. We're going to give you 0.75 or 0.8 of your Bitcoin. You're like, what the heck? How'd that happen? Well, that was a dollar amount. And that's just how it goes. That's the legal process. So maybe that's part of it. Again, just speculation, not for sure. Ah, uh, King Dog says, King Dogs, did you sell the majority of your crypto during the peak? Nope, I didn't um, because I never have been able to sell during the peak peak. It doesn't work like that. I did sell a lot in December to pay for the house. There's a video on that. And then we did a video in uh, March, early April, where it was called sell in May and go away, which is an old adage from Wall Street. And we sold some there. And of course, we went along and I did some dumb things, which was dollar cost average in Luna since December. <laughs> yeah, that's all gone. And then uh, I left 3% of my portfolio on uh, Celsius. Yeah, that's locked up. And I left a percentage, it wasn't that much on Voyager because I knew that was coming. But uh, I did leave all my VGX tokens on there. So that's whatever. But uh, I mean, I made some good choices. I made some bad choices because no one's perfect. Uh, before I knew DC, down 900,000 from a million? Holy smokes. Before I knew of DCA down, I, all because of bad crypto people like, ooh, I don't want to say that. I don't want that guy to sue me like, uh, like another crypto YouTuber is suing somebody else. Well, whatever. Some people don't, don't like people. That's how it is. Um, you know what, King, and everybody else here? 
Uh, again, not investment advice, but when I look at these things, and I look at what's going on, I just can't shake the fact that I feel like we're in the same thing just like in 2017, 2018. I, I just, when, when I look at these things, it just, it just becomes, I believe in cycles. And it, so I believe in the four-year cycles. I also believe in the 80-year cycles and the fourth turning. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we did a video about this two days ago. And I can just tell you, I mean, from what I see, tell me where I'm wrong, but we're still hitting these four-year cycles correctly. There's a halving, there's an all-time high dip and a reset. There's a halving, 2016, all-time high dip, reset. There's a halving, 2020, all-time high, 2021. There's a dip and a reset, and then we just do it again in 2024, and then we're going to do it again in 2028 and keep going. So to me, I just see this like this is the exact same thing I did last time. Like right here when it was boring, that's when I was buying. And I didn't in 2016, because. but really if you think about it, 2016 was during, well, I was during the halving. So, and look at how much time we have. I mean, think about this. I mean, really, really, really think about this. And even the video we talked about yesterday, it talks about how Grayscale believes that we have a, if history repeats itself, we have 250 days of a bear market, meaning sideways action, a little bit up, a little bit of down. That's a lot of time to do a lot of things, do a lot of dollar cost averaging. That's what I'm going to do. Again, maybe you say, no, what I want, I don't want to do that. I want to put all my money into a vending machine uh, business. You go right ahead. Uh, but I just see like, there's just a lot of time to do a lot of things. So that's how I see it. So don't worry, King. And then again, like I remember when I bought Bitcoin at 65, 75, 10,000, 17,500 in 2017. And then, of course, it went down to 6,000. I remember Cardano, I was buying at a dollar and then it went down to like five cents and I hated myself. And I bought it at six, seven cents for years. So it worked out over time. But that just, that just worked. That just in that instance doesn't mean they're all going to come back. Uh, Rob, would you consider having Lynn Alden on your channel? She seems like one of the more balanced, knowledgeable in the space. She's super smart. I don't know. Like, uh, like I feel like if she's on my channel, I might make her dumber just because. <laughs> so, uh, she's high level thinker. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I'd love to have her on, but it would just be just straight questions. I'd be like trying to keep up with her. Same thing with, uh, Michael Saylor, Michael Saylor though. You know what you're going to get with Michael Saylor, Bitcoin, and everything, and that's it. Everything else sucks. No, sure. Uh, give liquidity so we can bond him faster. Which website was that displayed the whale buying? So let me show you. That's not it. Ah, so great question. There's a link in the description. This is my, what I see when I do videos. But uh, if you scroll down in the description, so first of all, here's the website. Here's how to figure out if it's a scam email. You can run it through Google Apps, and it'll tell you. Here's uh, Kiva to give uh, for donations and things like that globally. Here's the app, the, the Trueflation website, and here's the, the stake pool stuff. Crypto IRA, uh, Masterworks, Ledger, taxes. Here's the sweat coin thing, and keep going down. Here's my second channel, strategies. Here in the story section. So this one right here where it says bitinfocharts.com, that's uh, this one right here. So you can find that. So it's, it's always there for you. And then, of course, my recommendations. Here's who I watch a lot. Coin Bureau, Invest Answers in the Cryptoverse. Tech Talk with Paul Barone. Big E, Crypto Stash, and Simon Dixon. So uh, not a lot of YouTubers do this for some reason. I don't understood why, of why they recommend other people. Maybe it takes away from their channel. I don't now and then of course the links here's how to file a claim here's how to tell celsius what you want the bank the future one and that's it oh, i got to add some other stuff there anyhow that's that saddle paddler i will at some point i've been handing out wrenches like it's going out of style which reminds me 
For all the, the moderators, which there's like 30 of you now, welcome. Thanks for being a moderator and carrying the wrench and wrench attacking people. If people say something negative about me, do not ban them. I mean, if it's like ridiculous, like, you know, Rob is a vampire or something crazy, I get it, right? If they say them negative, don't ban them because people sometimes just need to vent. Listen, I know people are pretty ticked off and uh, that's why I show up every day so they can vent a little bit. It's all right. And then if they, if they talk about craziness or spam, yes, ban them. But besides that, let people air it out. And that's it. That's all. That's my only thing I say. say. Uh, let's see. What else did I miss? Ooh, oversold in the weekly for the first time. Interesting, interesting. Ah, thank you, Gary. Bitcoin rich list. Ah, crooks of crypto. I didn't. If you're in El Paso, tomorrow at uh, 4.30, I will be at this place called Coconuts. It's downtown. Can't miss it. There's only one Coconuts in, in town, I believe. And we'll go from there. And I'll also put it on. Just follow me on Twitter, and I'll tell you where I'm at. And just meet up with me. Have some beers, and we'll cry about our shockingly bad portfolios. Solana on track. Everything's up track. Algo is up 30%. That should help the mooch. Uh, how is it dead? I don't think anything's dead. Algorand is like a snail. It's so slow. However, a lot of people said the same thing about Cardano, and uh, it's still slow, but it's making progress. And that's what it is. Uh, question, Mark says, Dan, are you in cash waiting for 20? Yes, I am. I'm waiting for 27th of July. Waiting to see what the Fed says. If they say, hey, one full percentage point up, I'll wait for the market to do what it does and then act accordingly. If not, I'll just, if the market doesn't move or goes up, I'll just catch it at that point. But I think, I think there's going to be some, everybody, not everybody is level-headed like us, right? A lot of people will, they'll get the numbers and they'll say, this is awful. And they'll start selling and it'll dip a little bit. And you could probably get something there. Uh, but well, Bertie, that's odd. You're a lovable guy. Everybody would want to, should want to adopt you. Beardy's uh, one of our, our moderators. He's not the first. Mullet was the first, but Mullet's busy making crazy trades and a bunch of money. <laughs> you trust Celsius to reorganize? I don't trust anybody of doing anything anymore. Yeah, Reef says... I trust up to any current average. It'll be next week. We're just working out the days. So we'll go from there. Uh, Goodness said a minute. Good day to break profits. I got to agree. <laughs> ah, no. Look, when people make bad calls, you just got to say, that's a bad call. Like me, I said, Bitcoin's going 150K in 2021. That didn't happen. And I said, VGX was going to go to $30. That didn't happen. And then uh, I think that I did get right and uh, chain link. But I mean, the ones that I get right doesn't really matter. It's the ones that are wrong. People remember you for. So the Zix is, this is nothing like the bottom. The last bottom of people giving up and multiple coins dying. I think a lot of these coins are dying. Even though they're listed, you got to remember that um, look at the volume. Look at the volume that is being, uh, as far as trading, it's not that high. And for these like 200 and below cryptos, there's really not much volume whatsoever. So just remember that. I think they will die. And I think, I've always said this before, and I'll say it again, is that what's going to happen is that Genzo is going to get his way. Uh, they're going to start to classify different cryptos and put out some framework as to what is a security and what is a commodity. They're gonna label a lot of different cryptos as uh, securities. Those securities are gonna have to register with the SEC here in the United States. They're not gonna have the money to, to go through the process and the paperwork and the, and the law firms. They're gonna fold or they're going to sell to the top 50, 20 different crypto and they get absorbed. If they even, even if these top ones even want them. And then what does that mean? That there is a confluence or a congregation or a concentration of talented developers and they can start to work on good projects and move from there. That's what I think. All right. 
And I think that's it. Okay, guys. Yep, fourth turning. Just do, do a Google search of 100-year financial cycles or the fourth turning. You'll see what I'm talking about. Quite scary. Quite scary. And I, there's a lot of questions. Rob, what if E2.0 fails? First of all, as close as they are, I mean, as, as careful as they are, I don't see it failing. I just see it getting pushed back again. Great. I'm in time. I'll give you a like. Thanks, Alex. Any news about Avalanche? Uh, still works pretty well. I still like it. The, the question is, is how much market share will they get from Ethereum? That's the big question. <laughs> Did you sell something on this rally? Mm, on this one, no. Last one, yes. Actually, I was, too, I was too busy putting this video together today. I think that's it. All right, everybody, it's 56 minutes. That's it for today. So look, I just need a favor from you. If you could just do me a favor, which is just hit the like button. That's it. You don't have to subscribe. I'm here every day. You can find me. But just hit the like button. Apparently, that's what the uh, YouTube algorithm likes. And that's all. So that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate everybody who comes by for an hour and just hangs out with me. That's awesome. But thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one, which will be tomorrow. All right, buddy. Adios.